Hey, I'm Raina. And I'm Nikki. This is our podcast where we're talking about how healing yourself includes tapping into your intuition. With a few laughs and some sage advice. To help you see that all the answers are inside of you if if you you just just shut up up and listen. Thank you for tuning in. We are here with Chef Scott. We're super excited. (coughs) What do you think would be like the easiest veggie for people that's going to be accessible and affordable and yummy? In December. In Canada. in Canada. There's so much still in December. We're just in like well, root season now. Well, riff about it, man. Okay, so let's riff. Okay, <laughs> vegetables in the wintertime. So the things that last the longest are the things that lived in the earth. The root vegetables have the longest shelf life. And they're really nice in the wintertime because they take a long time to cook, typically. You mm-hmm. have to cook a potato longer. You have to cook a beet longer than you would like lettuce. And when you cook it longer, it makes the food warmer. It makes your body warmer. So like root vegetables are definitely going to be the number one go-to. So, I mean, your carrots, your beets, your onions, you'll be finding these easily into like February, March. Locally, still, they last in a cellar for a very long time. Farmers are very clever in the way that mm-hmm. they store these things. Usually they're keeping them dirty. Some farmers even go that extra mile and like pack them in sand in a cellar. And so it kind of mm. mimics that that earth vibe and th- that carrot will be as crispy as the day that it was picked mm-hmm. and it will continue to have that strong sugar content because it's still kind of strict into thinking that it's still going. And again, yeah, you're either going to steam it or you're going to roast it. Those are the best ways to do it. Roasting is so simple. Yes. Um, on and a sheet it tastes pan. so good. Don't crowd mm-hmm. that sheet pan. That's the biggest word of advice. And turn I've the oven up. I've done that up. mistake a lot. People are afraid to turn their ovens up to 400 degrees. Like it's going to magically burn at 400. Mm-hmm. I don't think you can really roast something under 400 degrees. That's I like good to, to crank know. it like 425. I like a little bit of, a little bit of darkness when mm-hmm. I, when I burn the last of my cauliflower. I want to, that's when all the sugars come out, right? Mm-hmm. Sugars caramelize caramel, at high yeah. heat. That's that good flavor. Salt, oil, all you need. A little bit of pepper, a little bit of garlic if you're feeling crazy, but don't put any like marinades on your roasted vegetables. That just makes them steam in this weird juice. If you want to put like some apple cider vinegar on there afterwards, make some little dressing concoction, do it Mm -hmm. after. So they come out, toss them in a little bit of like honey and apple cider vinegar, a little bit of like chilies and garlic after they come out. And then they're going to just be so good. And then the magic of anything roasted, like that lore of like, what is it? Fried chicken tastes better the next day. Pizza tastes better the next day. Roasted vegetables the next day. I don't know if it's something about like oil after it's had a chance to just hang out. But roasted Brussels sprouts the night of are amazing. But even soggy and cold the next day. Oh my God, they're so good. So good. Roasted vegetable sandwich. Yeah, it's Mm. Oh, it just choked me up a little bit there. (laughs) Everyone's all like, the day after turkey leftovers, what about roasted vegetable yeah, sandwiches? Leftovers. Yeah, yeah. And roast anything. Mm. Like, if it's, if it's a root, it's going to roast. Radishes, there's so many radishes. They are abundant at any farmer's market because mm-hmm. how many radishes can one person mm-hmm. really eat? Mm-hmm. Raw. Mm-hmm. But when you roast them, they become something different entirely. They're, they're sweet. They're kind of like watery and juicy. Um, they can afford a lot extra salt, a little bit of chilies because to balance that sweetness mm. out. Roasted radishes are crazy good, nice and mild, go with lots of different things. I don't think I've ever had roasted radishes. I've only had them raw, and so I don't really like them. Oh, they're good roasted. It takes away that peppery bite. Okay. They're kind of still a radish, but yeah. softer, hmm. sweeter, better. See, I would not think to roast them. There was this time Scott made roasted vegetable vegan poutine oh. with miso gravy. Oh, man, yeah. I just made carrot fries the other day because if you're going to roast it, why not turn it into a French fry? Because then you can dip it in things and mm-hmm. it's just, you get more surface area for the crunch. Mm-hmm. When you roast carrot fries, they get all like curly and crunchy. And we did the same thing. We put a little miso gravy on there and they were so good. Dying. But like kohlrabi French fries and what? beet French fries. Radish, French fries, cut it into a little stick, and roast it like a vegetable. 400 degrees, salt and pepper, oil, done. So good. I have so many more ideas now. Makes me really realize how lazy I am with my damn I'm steamer. I'm so lazy. Just chop it and throw it in the steamer. Steam yeah. fries? Maybe. Not really. No, maybe no. not. It's, it's the roasty roast and the crunchy crunch. That doesn't happen in the steamer. I like my oven, too, because after it's done... 
making my vegetables all warm and cozy. You just leave the oven door open after the stove's totally. off and it warms your house up. Totally. There's nothing better than that <laughs> feeling of coziness. I learned this like it's Danish word, huga. Have mm-hmm. you guys heard of huga? Mm-hmm. Um, H-Y-G-G-E, Scandinavian idea of coziness. And so it's like that feeling of when you wake up in the middle of the night in the wintertime and you look out the window and there's like fresh snow and it's just you awake and you see that like winter wonderland out there and it just fills you with this tickly feeling inside. Or when you've come in from like tobogganing and you're all soggy and wet and you put on dry socks and wrap up in a blanket and pour yourself a cup of tea and sit by the fire, that coziness, like I hunt for coziness all winter long. (laughs) And roasted vegetables give me that like inside heart coziness cozy it's like hunter. a hug for your insides oh i love it cozy hunter i yeah. like that yeah huga hunter huga oh, hunter mm. i love it so now so because you have a family that you cook for so when you're doing roasted veggies is that usually as a side or would you feature that and then have other compartments oh we're of living it? the life of the bowl still just yeah like bowls always. forever please mm-hmm. like three days a week at least they're totally. just in one way or another yeah. with some kind of something cozy underneath usually a grain because that's mm-hmm. how we roll mm-hmm. um not so much salad in the winter my body mm-hmm. doesn't like cold salad no, in the neither. winter i just like as soon as the weather drops i i'm not gonna eat a salad now until probably april until right. the greens yeah. hit mm-hmm. it's steamed kale for days um collards and swiss chard but just keep it warm what's your favorite then, grain right now favorite grain um, I'm a, I'm a sucker for brown rice. Yeah, me too. I love the way that it's got a bit of a chew. Mm-hmm. Farro is nice that way as well, mm-hmm. but farro is a glutinous grain, so it doesn't really jive with everybody. Most Barley people, And I don't bowl. think people are familiar with farro. It's just not... Yeah, it's it's different. Yeah. But, like, there's so many of those whole grains. Mm-hmm. Like, oats are really nice when they're cooked whole grain. Not rolled oats like porridge, but whole grain before they get rolled out. Wheat berries are the same thing. They have a good yeah. little chew. They're really filling. Mm -hmm. They're nice to like marinate and sit in your fridge for a week in a salad. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of thing you can like toss with kale and then it just hangs out in a jar and it doesn't get all soggy like a Caesar salad. Mm -hmm. And it's just so good. Sorry, we took a tangent. Grains are cool too though. That's total winter food. Other stuff. I mean, grains are winter food. Yeah. That's what you would have. You would harvest it in the fall and that's what would hold you over and you'd sell her that for the winter, your Mm -hmm. grains and your beans. You're not going to be eating big bowls of grains and beans as a farmer in like spring. That's for light salads. Mm -hmm. This is the time of the year to get those cozy bowls, the food that like sits a little heavier, a little bit more fat in there, Mm -hmm. good healthy fats, put on a little layer of insulation. This is what your body wants right now. Mm -hmm. Indulge in a little cashew cheesecake. Cashew cheese, Nikki. Cashews uh. give me anxiety. <laughs> I have my bowl is rectangular, and I call it a trough. <laughs> like that I'm too. sure we've talked about troughs yeah. with Scott before, yeah. haven't we? My, it, troughs are life, right? <laughs> yes. I, I mean, my world, troughs are seven days a week, mm-hmm. and they just layering in whatever vegetables. I've been doing a bit of a hybriding of, of raw and steamed this last bit, but I'm have, I'm finding... I'm picking a bit more and wanting the more warm stuff. And mm-hmm. then I'm kind of like, ow, now there's a raw stuff left mm-hmm. that I have to eat. So now it's, I think it's time to do the full transition yes. to warm. Well, it's you know. getting cold now. So. Yeah. You just chuck that in a soup and blend it up like any of those fridge yeah. leftovers. You got yeah. like a sad looking something in the back. Yes. Steam it, puree it. Give it some onions. Give it some water. Onions. That's such a great idea because food, like just household food waste is so huge. And people oh, have that's a lot such of guilt a huge from subject right out. there is rethinking yeah. your food. Like if you're looking at your lettuce and you only see salad yes. and you don't want it to go to waste and every day it sits there, it's dying a little more, mm-hmm. you need to rethink it. Mm-hmm. If it's not going to be a salad for you, what can it be? Right. Apparently it can be soup. It can, according to Chef Scott. Totally can. And I mean, we've grown up for too long thinking that you only put spinach and kale in smoothies. Right. Any green can get mm-hmm. blended in a smoothie. It's mm-hmm. all just a bunch of water and fiber. Mm-hmm. And I mean, most of the greens are going to be pretty sweet. I just had a random bag in my freezer because that's what happens with greens in my house. If you have extra greens and they look like they're starting to get sad, just chuck them in the freezer and they're going to hang out and yeah. be perfect for a smoothie. They're totally. going to break down easier. Um, but yeah, my smoothie definitely had like mustard greens and radicchio in it. And that was kind of funky. <laughs> but it, it totally it blended smoothie. with the frozen mangoes. Like it, uh, it yeah. worked. But it was like, hmm, there's something unique going on here. What am I picking up on? But hey, no food waste. <laughs> no food waste. I don't think people would think to put their greens in the freezer. No, they just watch them get brown and then rotting and then throw them out. Yeah. 
Especially yeah. if you're buying it from the grocery store and they're coming in that little exactly, crate anyways. Yeah. Like it's going to sit perfectly in your freezer. That's like a good reload place. Mm-hmm. Reload them right from your farmer's market into a little a little crate that's consistently there and ready for you. Mm-hmm. Um, doesn't take up much space. After your greens are frozen, you can just kind of crush them up like fall leaves and they take up even less space in your freezer. Yeah. There's all those other good vegetables though that make wicked stock because soup season is now too, right? <sighs> Okay, let's talk about that after. Yeah. How do you make, um, like, because putting greens and fruit in a smoothie could be, like, to me, that's like, oh, I don't want a smoothie right now with fruit. And, like, I don't want fruit right now either because it's so cooling. Yeah. So how would you, like, could you add, like, cinnamon or ginger? Like, what else could you flavor a smoothie with to make it warming? Winter smoothies. Fruits? Yeah, how do you do a winter smoothie right? Mm. I don't know. We've been doing a lot of like those chocolatey sort of smoothies. So like banana, nut butter, Mm. cocoa, um, cinnamon, chai spice, those kind of vibes. Okay. But yeah, smoothies in the winter, they're usually going to be like frozen fruit. And that's just going to chill you right out. Exactly. Your poor little digestive fire. I know. Our digestive fire barely hangs on Mm -hmm. on a good day. Mm -hmm. So many people have like this underactive digestive system. And then you go put something like super cold on that mild digestive fire and it just snuffs it right out. Yeah. It kind of turns off your whole pilot light for your warming core for the rest of the day. So I, I don't know, should we maybe like leave your smoothie on the counter and let it melt before you enjoy it? And now it's like... Room temperature, winter smoothie. Yeah, maybe not a green one. That'd be <laughs> Do you have smoothies in the winter? No. Um, yeah, no, I don't really do the smoothies anymore. Oh, okay. Um, I just got really comfortable with just, I got really cool with like chia pudding type mm. things because I found them fast, super easy mm-hmm. and, um, just whatever fruit there was, it just got stuffed in there with it and spoon o'clock, right? Just mm-hmm. jam it in my rigging hole. It was great. I went, it was, Down the I mean, like, anyone who knows me more than five minutes knows I get like crazy aware of, of like single, like use plastic and stuff. And when I was really deep into the smoothie thing I was buying for, for my own convenience, because, you know, entrepreneurship is real and time crunch. I was buying the bags of pre cut frozen fruit because it was easy for me to do a measuring cup of said fruit, maybe a raw banana, a handful of spinach, whatever, if I was supplementing in a bit of a protein powder or whatever. But it got to the point where I was creating between five and seven zip bags a week. Mm hmm of plastic garbage Mm -hmm. for the convenience of smoothies. And when I identified that as one human over Mm -hmm. the course of a month, I'm like, if I'm not going to do smoothies in a more like responsible way, smoothies can't work for me. So instead I, I found that the chia seed pudding worked really well for me or uh, soaking the oats overnight in a jar, Mm -hmm. stuffing some fruit in that and just having that ongoing jar of, whatever, whether it's chia or oats Mm -hmm. with some, you know, whatever non-dairy milk and then cram some fruit in it in the morning. Mm -hmm. I can't eat first thing in the day. I'm a carry it to work eater when I get to work kind of girl. Mm -hmm. I need my coffee first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need to settle into my food. Settle into the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chia pudding transports well. Yeah. Oats transport well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just chuck that in a jar. Keep it cozy. And if it doesn't, like, I don't need it to be cold. Like, if it sits from my bag to the shop and it's two hours later and I pull it out and eat it. Mm-hmm. I'm super cool with that. It's fine. Chia pudding. Chia mm. pudding. I like putting cocoa in it and making chocolate chia pudding. Yeah, I got a request this week for my kids for chocolate chia pudding. Yeah. Like that, remember that? Where did the chia pudding go? We go on like these kicks mm-hmm. and we'll eat granola every day for six months and then we'll just fall off the granola train and not have it for like a year yeah Yeah. or chia pudding we like we just crushed chia pudding so hard last spring and now we haven't had it since spring yeah so it's time to revive the chia pudding (laughs) it's super good Um, my son likes it when i make rice pudding because i do it with um like coconut cream and then Mm. i caramelize bananas and then put the caramelized bananas in it and he just thinks that's like all Nikki, you've things. never told me that you make that. I know. It's delicious. <sighs> Not enough people know about rice pudding. Rice pudding is like classic. I, I do do it with non-dairy milks. It's my preference. And when I'm like feeling extra, you know, I get like the really good coconut cream mm-hmm. and then do that in their last and it gets nice and gooey. And then if there's bananas that are a little bit past that, 
Like, I myself don't like bananas after they start to turn. So at that, it's they're either getting checked in the freezer for banana bread later, mm -hmm. or they're going to get thrown in the frying pan and caramelized and thrown on something else. And uh, rice pudding. So do you make so a big good. batch of it and then have rice pudding for, like, a few days? No, because um, my, my teenage son, just he's, till. he'll just eat it till mm. it's gone. Mm -hmm. So we make the amount we're going to eat that night. <laughs> Otherwise, like... Yeah, too much rice pudding. He's like a seagull. He'll just yes. keep eating it. <laughs> go, go, go. Growing go. boys need their calories. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, that was a lot of rice pudding. <laughs> I did notice there's a lot of apples there that could have also oh. been eaten, but it's not as delicious, well, right? Well, yeah, and that's yeah. Why grab a, a, like a yeah. raw apple when there's a nice bowl yeah. of rice pudding there? Mm -hmm. Oh, yummy. Mm -hmm. I haven't had that in so long. I'll make it for you someday. <gasps> I do have a can we eat it in a trough? Cream, a trough of rice, rice pudding? pudding sounds rice pudding delightful. Trough. Can we just have a quick rewind to a uh, caramelized banana? Oh my yes, please! Yeah. I want can, to like, talk we just, more about we that. We went too fast for the caramelized bananas. Can you tell me more about your caramelized bananas? <laughs> yeah, um, it's they were better before I went vegan because I did put butter in the pan with them and then cook them like that. But now I just put them in the pan as they are, but lower heat and just let them cook down, and then that sugar starts to caramelize and it's just so you don't put so, anything in the pan no just the bananas and heat and in my case butter because it's in your case butter, butter yeah, because it's delicious Ugly butter yeah and you'll get that extra <laughs> extra goodness i miss butter a lot i'll be honest with you so just butter and overripe bananas and the sugars from the bananas just caramelize into this does it turn into like a gooey paste it's well it depends how far you want to cook them i usually cut mine a little thicker and on an angle because they look pretty. Mm -hmm. And then I cook them down a little bit. So then there's still some firmer piece of banana in like this gooey sauce. And you like carefully flip them so they stay in one I piece? I try to. Dude. Yeah. It's so good. It's so good. And You've never that. done that? I've never fried yeah. bananas before. Oh my, oh my God. Gosh. It's so good. If you put it on like like frozen treats too, it's really good. So if you have like a, oh, yeah. a Koyo or something like that, it's like... I have some sad looking bananas on my counter because that's how I love bananas. Mm -hmm. I like them you know. to turn like dark, dark brown so you can squeeze them out like toothpaste. Oh my God. To me, that's just a gag. <laughs> <laughs> but banana bread though, come on. Banana like, bread, yeah. For yeah. banana bread, you're just getting extra yeah. sugar the longer it sits there. Yeah. It's going to make the banana so the, banana The longer bread. they go, the more gooey your caramelized banana be more like a caramel caramelized banana sauce mm -hmm. rather than the chunky, like if you cut them. Right. So yeah, the riper they are, the less fruit chunks you'll have in the more caramelized sauciness oh my god i feel like a i'm shocked you've never done this before as just as the amazing chef you are i just assume you've done literally everything imaginable that's not Secondly, even possible that's <laughs> oh, not even it possible totally everything is. Is it totally is. no way we're always reinventing and there's new things all the time but this is this is magic it's secondly, really great on secondly i feel like scott loves it on pancakes scott's gonna go home and do this i am like, doing this tonight. probably like tonight yes <laughs> it is happening tonight there's some cashew ice cream in my freezer and it's gonna get some hot Ooh. gooey bananas on top of it uh, oh, God. Yeah, and then yeah. i bet if they're hot i could like take some chocolate and just like Mm -hmm. Hit the cheese grater with the chocolate, and it would get all like oh. instant chocolate sauce. Yeah. Oh my God, it's happening. Yeah. You can take it different directions. I've cinnamon them. I've like mm -hmm. I've taken them different ways. Yeah. Cinnamon nutmeg would be really nice in okay. a coconut rice pudding. Coconut rice pudding. Ooh yeah. yeah. Well, that's a great uh, winter food right there. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so you talked about overnight oats, Scott. How could people have uh, hot oats? And not get bored of having the same thing over and over again. Like, how can they make it have variety in them? Don't put everything on them every single day. I think that's the biggest issue. Like, mm. pick two things. Right. So, like, one morning you're having bananas and pecans. And the next day you're having, I don't know, hemp and chia. And the mm -hmm. next day you're having a different fruit. Rather than having, like, this Just same loaded. fruit salad yeah. every single day, yeah. it gets boring that way. Like, keep it simple, and then you're really going to taste those ingredients. And try with different kind of oats. You can roll oats, but you can roll all those other grains too. So you can go to a bulk food store and get like rye flakes mm -hmm. or um, barley flakes, which again, really good in the wintertime. I don't know if um, I had one person once, actually several people prescribed from the traditional Chinese medicine camp that in the winter when you've got kind of more of that cold, damp, that specifically in the respiratory tract, you need barley. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes they'll even recommend you make barley water. So you're just boiling barley 
save the barley, but keep all that water and then sip, sip the, the mm -hmm. barley water as restorative. That's really good for oh, wow. the respiratory tract. So mm -hmm. the barley oats is that same general idea, right? Cool. Um, really unique, just a kind mm -hmm. of a different earthy flavor. But if you're chucking all kinds of fruit on there anyways, it's, it's breakfast. Yeah, it's right in. And then it mixes it up. Yeah, totally. And Your if you're getting really low on things, it is good with just PB and J. Oh yeah, just PB and J oh. in your oatmeal. You're like, rig. I really dropped the ball on grocery shopping. PB, PB and, and J. J. PB and J oats, man. So yummy. Yeah. Simple. I never put jam on my oatmeal. Oh that my sounds God. brilliant. I it's would so do good. peanut butter. I've never You're done peanut butter. Blowing my mind, yeah. yeah. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. <laughs> yeah, and you're I'm always like, oh yeah. God. Well, I'm one of I'm those people that I don't. I don't believe that just because you have a fridge, you have to fill it. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's one of the things that people, like, they do because, like, for me, coming from a family, um, that scarcity was a thing. The fridge always needed to be full. But then the amount of food waste was, exactly. like, really quite sad because it was too much food. But there's that abundant yes. thing that the fridge is full, we're safe, we're okay. But then, you know, that time passes and there, it was too much food. Mm -hmm. Or you know, your, your routine gets thrown off. So your meal plan went to shit or whatever your scenario was. So I'm one of those people that keeps the fridge a little on the emptier side, but I'm also an urban dweller. So I can stop and pick things up as I need right. them. But some days that doesn't happen. So mm -hmm. you get kind of bare bones. You're like, mm -hmm. okay, creative it is. And I don't want to eat just plain oats. Cause honestly, if I bring just plain oats, they'll stay in the jar in my backpack. They won't get ate. Mm -hmm. A little bit of PB and J goes Nobody. a long way. It's tasty. I like being on the low side too in the fridge because it keeps you just being resourceful and actually mm -hmm. watching what's in there mm -hmm. and the next stuff actually gets used. Mm -hmm. And if the fridge is too full and stuff well, gets packed. Well, things get to the back. And, yeah. and then you, when you, it's like, oh, fridge clean out. And then you're like, oh, we got 16 science mm -hmm. experiments in here and, you know, insert dollars wasted mm -hmm. at this point. And that's precious resources. Yeah. Like our, mm -hmm. our planet for the amount of people trying to eat food, mm -hmm. it's we need to be accountable for what we're eating and what we're purchasing because I always like to use the analogy of when you're at a dinner party and you're all at the table and the, the, the bowl of carrots gets to you. We all just in our head immediately, there's 10 other people at this table. I'm going to take my share mm -hmm. because you don't want to be that person that takes all the fucking carrots because mm -hmm. that's rude. So we just immediately do that. Yet when we go to the grocery store, we don't think like that. I'm sharing this food on this planet with this many people. What's my share? You just buy, my fridge is empty. Mm. Scarcity, scarcity. Oh. Buy the thing. It's on sale. Get mm -hmm. four. And I'm like always like, so what's my share <laughs> of this thing that I'm going to use and eat? I love so that. So that's kind of how I think when I shop, not I've got to fill my fridge. Yeah. Yeah. I like that analogy a lot. Mm -hmm. No one wants to be the dick that eats all the potatoes. Uh, yeah, don't take all the... Don't, don't take all the mashed potatoes. No. Everyone wants those. Oh, yeah, they're the potatoes. best part. They are. Mm -hmm. Hey, we were supposed to go back rewind want 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 to bone stocks and broths remember Soups. yeah we were we talking about, about that yeah, that's where and all your said, side vegetables go, go right yes and so there's some fat side vegetables that are destined for stock carrots celery onions so if you ever have that last wiggly little carrot at the bottom of the bag or the heart of the celery because i don't know about you but who one. buys a whole head of celery and actually finishes it all every single time it's next to impossible. Mm -hmm. That's like, true. How, what do you eat celery in besides occasional stir fries and soups and raw? And Tuna salad. salad. <laughs> you, you can braise it. It's a thing. But, I yeah. mean, most people, it just kind of hangs out. Mm -hmm. You just true. toss it in a spot in your freezer. You have got a space. You've got that those really rad reusable silicone bags that are going to now replace Ziploc. Mm -hmm. I'm digging it. Um, those are amazing. And you just cram that with all of your carrot, celery, onion scraps, mm -hmm. carrot skins, um, or tops, those stem tops, chuck that all in there. Your onion skins, root bits, all that goes in the bag. All the stuff that people just throw Some up? things that you don't want to put in your leftover veggie stock is that whole like brassica family, like broccoli mm -hmm. and cauliflower and Brussels sprouts. They can get a little bit funky and bitter, mm -hmm. but if, if it's in the name of zero food waste, by all means, go nuts. But maybe give those ones a separate bag and just don't cook them as long in your broth. Mm -hmm. If you're just doing a veggie broth, you just put all of those in a pot of cold water, a little bit of salt, a bay leaf, and some peppercorns you turn it up and then as soon as it hits a boil you turn it back down 45 minutes 
really low time on a vegetable broth because it's like you're cooking vegetables. Right. It gets to a point and it smells real damn good. The nose knows. That's mm-hmm. when you pull it off the heat. If you, if you let it go longer than that, like, I heard that bone broth takes 24 hours to make. Well, that's not carrots. You mm-hmm. would never cook mm-hmm. a carrot for 24 hours. You would never even cook a carrot for four hours. It's going to turn to a weird gray mush. Mm-hmm. And then all the delicious flavors are just going to die in the pot. Like 45 minutes is beautiful. And it smells really good. Drain it out feed your compost or your chickens with whatever's left and then you've got that good good broth build anything off that um bones are a little different but Mm -hmm. like they take some more time you want to give them a little caramelization in the oven um make sure you're getting them from really good high quality sources not nutrition right which ones with roasting them it's just better for the flavor way better for the flavor yeah but that's what you're going for right you don't want uh i don't you don't want to just have boiled dinner Mm -hmm. you want it to have you want it to be flavorful Mm -hmm. so that that roasting that kind of imparts that caramelization same thing with a carrot the difference between a roasted carrot or a steamed carrot or a roasted cauliflower and a steamed cauliflower i guess they both kind of have their place but give me that caramelized sugar any day of the week for sure right Mm -hmm. um yeah broths are broths are pretty simple at the end of the day the the biggest word of advice i have for them is use less water just enough water to cover whatever you're putting in there. Right. Often we think, oh, I'm making broth. I could add twice as much water and have twice as much broth. Yeah. But it's just going to be real weak broth. Watered down. Twice as much water yeah. is half the flavor. Right. So just cover your bones or just cover your vegetables. Okay. And then that's, that's the magic. That's your base for all of your goodness. And then you just need onions. Mm. Onions are the magic. Onions are my favorite. I love that whole family because Mm -hmm. they start out as something so, frankly, off-putting. It makes you cry when you cut it. Your body (laughs) is telling you no. Your body is saying, like, no, this is is something that I shouldn't eat. In the same way that a bean makes you fart because your body is going into digestive upset saying, hello, warning sign, this is hard for me to digest. When you cut an onion, it makes you cry. You can't just eat it like an apple, although I've met some strange little kids who do. Oh, interesting. Right? That's a thing. That was my dad Tangent. with uh, salt. He would just put salt what? on it and just crunch on it. What? Right? And I'm like, what the heck? The onion sandwich. I've met people who have just like onion and butter and bread in a sandwich. Okay. Yeah. To each their own. Yeah, totally. But you take that raw onion and a little bit of oil and thyme. And not, not the spice, but the thyme. The watch <laughs> on my, on my wrist. I'm wrist. pointing to my watch. <laughs> And it just fries until it gets a little bit of a color on there. And then you just turn that temperature down and you cook them until they're like melted mush, like 45 Mm. minutes in that pot. And that onion goes from something sharp and spicy to something so sweet and so full of umami, you cannot replicate that flavor anywhere. And then all you have to do is put water in it and you've got soup. And so you put your broth in there and you've got magic. And it's just your leftover frozen vegetable Mm -hmm. scraps and some caramelized onions and oh man, that's that soup. That's real nice soup. Put in some that? noodles. Yeah, because noodles mm. make you happy. <laughs> noodles, noodles is a thing. When we were in nutrition school, there was there was like a diet. We learned all the diets, right? You, mm-hmm. you could you could eat paleo or vegan or ketogenic, and then there was mm-hmm. like the noodletarian diet. Mm-hmm. In this textbook <laughs> that we had. One. Like Betty Argyle says that you could have noodles. Any day of the week, because there's all kinds of noodles. You've got your wheat noodles. You've got your buckwheat noodles. You've got your, you've got your noodles made of kelp. You've got your noodles made of zucchini, and you can spiralize anything into a noodle. Now, chuck that in your soup. It'll make you happy. I completely forgot about Mrs. Argyle Mrs. and the noodle Argyle, tarian. right? Oh, so man. sweet. Oh, it's so sweet. And hey, you could turn it into a religion. You could be a pastafarian and have noodles every day. Absolutely. All hail I could the flying do, I spaghetti think I monster. I could do that. <laughs> that that book is great. Uh, I believe that I believe it's Dr. Haas that has the um, vitamin L, and then he talks about vitamin how many L. hugs you need per day for That's like maintenance love. and growth, and it's so sweet. <laughs> that is the best bang for your buck. If anyone is curious about holistic nutrition, um, staying healthy with yeah. nutrition by Elson Haas. Yep, Dr. Haas. He's not giving me any money to tell you how good his book is, but it was oh. the best $40 I ever spent. Maybe I will write him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Bible. There's it everything you need Bible. to know about nutrition yeah. in this yeah. like three inch textbook. It's and you can huge. skip the first few chapters and get past all the sciencey stuff and just get into the recipes and the more fun stuff. Totally. There's everything There's in so there. There's so much. Yeah, it's a beautiful book. 
Yeah. So, so you have like, or do you have broths and stocks going like very consistently? Like all the time. Yeah. I think, I think I could probably heat my home with just, just that. the cauldron mm-hmm. all the time. That's I, brilliant. I would like to have a wood stove because mm-hmm. then if your wood stove's burning, just chuck a pot on top of it and always have that percolating with something going. Mm-hmm. But whether I'm making broth overnight and then you wake up in the morning, you're like, the house smells like soup and I'm so hungry. Why is my belly growling first thing? Like you wake up and you're just ravenous because you've been smelling soup all night long. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's either broth or there's, there's soups going and things being pickled and preserving the seasons. I need to get a squeegee to squeegee the steam off of my windows from all of the pot liquor. You're just ripping. always <laughs> painting pictures with your words. It's fantastic. <laughs> I think one of the, because I, um, I just wrote a blog on healthiest things to eat for lunch because I was talking with people in my Facebook group about that and that was the meal that people struggled with the most was like what to eat for lunch. And part of, part of it in my blog, I partly explained that it's not, it's not necessarily like the foods or, or how to put them together in a lunch. It's also just that we've, in our heads, have decided that lunch has to be a soup or a salad or a sandwich. And so we just get stuck in that routine. And it's like, you can have breakfast for lunch. You can have, or even like for breakfast, it's like you can have stir fry at breakfast. You can have dinner time food at breakfast. Like, but it's these restrictions that we, right, that we put on these mm-hmm. meals that they have to look a certain way. And it's like, no, you don't have to just have cereal or oatmeal for breakfast. You can have any kind of food. Like, but we have these ideas of what it's supposed to feel like. And breaking out of that is like really freeing. It's like, oh, oh, yeah, I can have, I can have not my, my, I don't, it doesn't have to be a tuna sandwich for lunch. It's like, no, there's so many things. Around the like, world, there's all kinds of different things. Unlimited for possibilities. Miso soup is classic Japanese breakfast. Miso soup right. and rice pudding. And that's your and nice and simple so way to start your beautiful. day. It's warm and cozy. I just think of it as like meal one, meal two, meal three. <laughs> that's great. Frankly, lunch is almost always dinner. Okay. If if uh, if you're not making enough dinner to have leftovers, you're just doing it wrong. Like cook I agree. once, eat twice. Absolutely. You're already in the kitchen. Just put a little bit extra in, and there's your lunch or dinner for the next day. Absolutely. We whenever we cook grains, my family eats one cup of rice raw, but I'm gonna always cook two because mm-hmm. I don't have to cook rice tomorrow. Totally. It's gonna be just as good stir fried or with some kind of gravy steamed into something. Um, your leftovers are so easily repurposed that way or done in the same purpose you intended them and just have dinner the next day. Don't Making it easy. It. Yeah, don't overthink it. Yeah. The trough, the bowl. <laughs> the trough. Layer it up in a jar. Just find a really good sauce mm-hmm. that you like to slather because uh, I'm yeah. a saucy kind of guy. I'm a saucy, <laughs> saucy person as well. I'm all about the sauce. Uh, zingy sauces make everything better. I'm not um, as saucy, I'm sassy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I won't argue that point. Yeah. Uh, any other party? <laughs> what are you pulling out your notebook for? Oh, this is like the holy tome. There's all kinds of good things in here. <laughs> any other parting words of wisdom, Scott, for people to, to eat, keep their inspiration of eating well through the winter when it's dreary and cold? Um, get friendly with your root vegetables. Always make them into French fries. Like, always. Because you want French fries more. Of all of the silly little gadgets to buy, try one of those spiralizers and then turn all of those roots into noodles. Because again, noodles are better. Mm-hmm. If you have an opportunity to have some beets and some carrots and some sweet potato, or you could have sweet potato fries or zucchini noodles. These sound way more fun. We are, all have a little kid inside of us that wants to just have pasta every night for dinner. Well, do it, but do it with root veggies and then you're doing yourself a huge favor. Huge favorite. It's going to taste so delicious. Be so good for you. Brilliant. Yeah. Ferment things. Ferment things. the season. That's a whole other day. It is. It is the season to ferment. In the summertime, (laughs) I have no drive to ferment because it's so hot. You can't even really ferment. Trying to make kimchi in August Mm -hmm. is a sketchy thing Mm -hmm. because it's not cold enough anywhere to do a proper fermentation. But as soon as this temperature hits... Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, it's like my body different. says, I don't want any more salad, but give me all that fermented food. Time mm-hmm. to massage some love. But that's like a whole other episode. Roots and ferments. It's true. And living in an apartment downtown. Yes. That's hot water heated. Yes. Also makes it very challenging to ferment. Mm-hmm. We had a couple crocks of sauerkraut. Yeah. Didn't go very well. Yeah. But let me tell you, it sure smelled like grandma's farts in there. 
<laughs> the joys of fermenting at home. Yeah. We're the neighbors that uh, like stink up the whole common area with our fermenting and stuff. Oh, Tim and Nikki, you're yeah. up to something the whole yeah. way smells funky. Yeah, it's for real. <laughs> it's fantastic.